Let's look at what happens uh, in circular motion with, let's say, a circle where an object is going, let's say, around the circle like this. We have a roller coaster situation where you go upside down and you're going off in that direction here. What kind of forces do you want to go and, and how do you solve some of those problems? Well, you can see that the uh, roller coaster at the bottom is going to have a um, downward force. The, the, let's talk about the character in the roller coaster. He's going to have a weight, mg, pulling him down here. Now, he would fall down if something didn't hold him up. The seat on his uh, roller coaster is providing an upward normal force like this. Now, which way is the centripetal acceleration acting? Centripetal acceleration always points in towards the center of the circle. So there is the direction of the centripetal acceleration. So you can see what is contributing to the centripetal acceleration in that image right there. And the normal force is providing the centripetal acceleration. Um, well, let's uh, see if actually I wanted to solve that problem. I would write it like this. I would write Newton's second law, the sum of the forces, is going to equal ma. <clears throat> well, assuming he's not speeding up or slowing down, we'll say he's traveling around there with a constant velocity, which, uh, since he's going up against gravity, is not going to be exactly true, but we'll just say it's a constant velocity. There's no acceleration here. The only acceleration would be centripetal. There are two forces, however. This is the sum of the forces from I equals 1 to 2, and this is a force in the I direction. So we have two forces there. We have one in the direction of the centripetal acceleration right there. That's the normal force. So that's going to be positive. Remember um, what we had stated, that uh, anything in the direction of the acceleration is going to be the positive direction. So we have the normal force. And mg is going to point downward. mg, that's pointing downward. And that's going to be equal m. Now I can replace a c, the centripetal acceleration. I use the little subscript c to denote centripetal acceleration. I can replace that with what value? v squared over r. So, let me just extend the page right there. I now have, if I want to find out how I feel, what force I feel, that's going to be the normal force, the seat pushing against me. It's going to be mv squared over r plus my own weight. So I'm going to feel heavier at the bottom. Okay. So um, that is that example here. Now let's say you keep going around, and we'll do one on the side too because I think that's interesting, but we'll do one upside down. So there's the wheels, there's the guy, he's upside down. And uh, what happens here? Well, it's interesting. Which way does gravity point? Well, gravity always points down. There's mg. That's always going to point down. Which way is the normal force going to point? Well, if you're going fast enough, you're going to be pressed up against your seat. If you're not going fast enough, you're going to fall out, and you won't be pressed up against your seat. But if you're going fast enough, you're going to be pressed up against your seat, and so which way is the normal force going to act? The normal force is going to point downward, oddly enough. And you can think of it this way. The car wants to fly off the track. The car wants to go this way. Something has got to push it. The car wants to go this way in a tangent to that. So right at that point, it wants to take the tangent. The only thing supplying the force is the track on, on the wheels. The track is holding it in. Well, the wheels are pushing against the cart, and the cart seat is pushing against you. So the normal force is downward if the velocity is high enough. So this is at the bottom. And at the top, this is the situation we have. Which way does the acceleration point? Well, acceleration always points into the center of a circle. So at the top, the acceleration is pointing down. 
So once again, we sum the forces from I equals 1 to 2 equals MAC. This time, they're both pointing towards the acceleration. So I now have the normal force and MG supplying me with centripetal acceleration. That's going to equal MV squared over R. So I'm going to get the normal force, the force you feel, is equal to mv squared over r minus your weight. So you're going to be, it's, going to, it's going to be less. If the v isn't high enough, what happens if... So what happens if the velocity is such that if mv squared over r equals mg... then you get the normal force equaling zero. And that's the minimum velocity. This is the minimum velocity for that radius, for that radius. Um, otherwise, you fall out of your seat. You basically you're basically weightless for that one particular instant. For an instant of time, you'd be weightless, and you'd coast through that point, and then you'd be pushed downward against your seat again. If you go any slower, then you would be pressing up against your seat belts, and the normal force from your seat belts would be pointing upward. You can solve for that velocity very simply. That would be F sub n equals 0 equals mv squared over r minus mg. So I get mv squared over r equaling mg. What cancels out here? Mass. And you get v squared equaling rg. That's the velocity for that particular radius. Uh, minimum velocity. Now one last aspect of this is what... Oops, let me fix that. Okay, uh, what happens if the guy is sideways? I've got uh, which way? Which way is weight? Weight is always down, always pointing out. Which way is the normal force? The normal force has to hold him in the circle. The normal force is the centripetal force. So which way is the normal force going to point? The normal force is going to, the seat's going to push you that way. The normal force, in this case, at, at the very least, the normal force is the centripetal force. It certainly is at the bottom. It certainly is here. It's here. Here it's a combination of the two. But here it's certainly the normal force. And the acceleration points directly in like that. So, in this case, we have, let me do this in another color here, we have the, uh, on the side, we have the sum of the forces equals mac. In this case, as you can see, right up here, I only have one force in the centripetal accelerator. mg does nothing. It's going to try to make you fall, but the normal force is going to hold you in place. And so I only have one force here, so it's just going to be F sub n equals mv squared over r.